I'm Snow Laco. I'm a professional fisherman all my life. And I live in New Haven, opposite the San Remo, but uh, the last few years we used to moor the boat in San Remo. It was a lot safer for us over there. Uh, my grandfather started uh, boat building in Queenscliff. Uh, then they shifted over to Rosebud, and uh, him and his four brothers used to build a lot of boats in uh, Rosebud. A lot of small boats and bigger boats. And then uh, when he found us more lucrative fishing, we used to, we'd come over this way and did more fish and a bit of boat building. I um, built about uh, what be six or eight boats over here while we were fishing. Then we finally gave it away and went back to fishing. See, well, I left school at 14. Uh, well, I was taken out of school, I don't know why. I was told I had to go fishing, and that's all I ever learned. Till the time I was 20, I don't think I ever was on land. Till I was about 20 and 21, till I got my own boat. Then I thought, oh, this, this home living is pretty good. <laughs> Those days, uh, I'm going back in the um, 60s, start of the 60s when I started. Um, must have been uh, probably seven or eight cray fishing boats. But most of my life, I used to fish around the Victorian coast, Wilson Promontory, the Bass Strait Islands, King Island. Flinders Island, and the later part of my life, I used to first be uh, south and west coast of Tasmania. Well, to start off, you have to have a cray licence, and then you've got to have, you're allowed a certain amount of pots for the size of your boat, and a cray pot is, uh, is around about a metre wide and about oh, three quarters of a metre high, like a big cage thing. We used to uh, uh, put bait in and then we'd go out and drop them in a certain reefy areas. You had to find the proper reefy areas where the cray was always on the reef. And um, used to uh, uh, find the best place for that, and you have to keep moving and moving in little different areas all the time. We used to hold, uh, well, we hold about a ton and a half roughly. I'd love to catch a ton and a half now with the price of them. <laughs> uh, when I first started, we used to go away for a week or two weeks, and then in the winter time, this time of the year, we used to go to Flinders Island, and we probably stopped there six or eight weeks. And then uh, later on, we used to go to Tasmania, I'd leave here in uh, late October and the, with a boat, and the boat would come home probably late May. When I first went to the sea, we never had a radio. We had an echo sounder, which, which picked up the, uh, the reefy bottom on the ocean floor. Um, but uh, then I finally got a radio. Then uh, later in life, we got radar, and that made things a lot simpler. And uh, Towards the very end, I, I put a GPS on, which I never really had. Uh, everybody had GPSs. I, I, I knew where I was going. I knew exactly what time I'd be home within an hour or so. <laughs> some of the weather we had was just, we used to go through. I think about it now. Some of the conditions we work under and the weather we used to go through, I oh, must have been mad, you know, but, but that was the way of life. Uh, and the ocean swells would come up. You keep your eye on that all the time. You do get caught. Uh, you, you're fishing close. That's where you, sometimes the best grey fishing was. Then you get caught with the swells and you might lose half your gear or uh, lots of times a lot of risks. Oh, we're not going to go in there, a lot of breakers. So I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go and wait till tomorrow, wait till the next day. And always used to tell my crew, don't take the risk, you can always come back tomorrow. If you can take a risk, you won't come back tomorrow. But the competition's not there. See, probably eight, nine boats fishing in the area. It's pretty, yeah, not a very big area, pretty keen. You got to you know, really push and you know, and to try and beat the other person, you know. But what used to happen? Uh, you go into a port, and a couple of these, I mean, half a dozen these blokes, they used to give me the horrors. They bloody uh, trying to trying to how's your time? Where you been? Where you been? And if you went on the boat, some of them would break into your boat and tap into your GPS and try and get the marks. Because some of them do that. Yeah. Oh, I'm the only one who knows where it is. No one else knows. Uh, I don't tell them that, fuck them. <laughs>